Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Gone with the Wind, written by Margaret Mitchell. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Alright, so Scarlet O'Hara, that's the woman we're following within this work. Um, she's a very interesting individual. Um, we're looking at the setting. So the setting of this work, we're looking at Georgia. We're looking at um, the Union Army versus the Confederate Army, the Civil War. Uh, we're looking at the time of slavery, the time of plantation. This is Georgia. Um, and things are different at that time in America or what is now known as America. Um, Scarlett O'Hara, she's 16 years old and she's ready to get married. Um, you know, whenever I read works like this, it's always very interesting to see how young people got married. Um, you know, by 14, 15, people are looking for marriage partners. And by 16, 17, people are married, sometimes with children already. So it's very fascinating how the world has changed so quickly, so fast. Um, so Scarlett O'Hara, um, she wants to marry... Um, this man by the name of Ashley, um, but Ashley Wilkes is uh, marrying his cousin by the name of Melanie. Uh, so, you know, Scarlett O'Hara, she's like, you know, I want to confess my love, how much I love Ashley. You know, he's gentle. He's, you know, well-read. He's He seems to be a man of of interest of hers and you know and you know he's not Ashley's not really he doesn't want to be with Scarlet um so he, he go ahead he goes ahead ahead he goes ahead and he marries Melanie and um and out of frustration out of passion out of burning passion however you want to name it uh, Scarlet goes and marries Charles so, you know, keep up with me here because, you know, Scarlett O'Hara, she marries uh, a few people within this work. Um, so the whole thing with Ashley doesn't work out. She, you know, she, throughout the work, she wants to be with Ashley, but she mm, she later realizes that she does. She's not truly in love with Ashley, but throughout the work, she just had this this soft spot for Ashley because later, you know, of course, she, she doesn't get to marry Ashley. She marries Charles. Um, after that, well, Charles goes off to war. Um, he joins the Confederate Army. He dies in the war. Um, before, you know, he went off to war. They got married. She got pregnant. And so she's 17 and she has a baby on the way and the father is dead. Um, so... That's a lot to take in. I mean, then, you know, to cheer herself up, she goes to Atlanta with Melanie. And um, Melanie, you know, that this the wrong time, but, you know, she goes into labor. So there, um, there's this man by the name of Rent, um, Rhett, um, that wanted to court Scarlett. Um, this is way before she even got married the first time, but... Um, Scarlett did not, you know, Scarlett O'Hara did not marry Rhett. Um, she married Charles, and Charles is dead now, and she's a widow, and she's 17, which is like, kind of like, it, it messes with your head, because you're like, you know, at 17, most Americans today are kind of just date, dating in high school, um, but within this work, it's like, it's like, it's it's a little because you think like a widow is like someone who's like in their 40s at least but when you hear like a 17 year old with child and she's a widow and now she has another guy that wants to be with her to marry her you're like aren't these just kids so it's kind of like you're seeing these i mean in the time that i'm reading this from in the time that i'm looking at this from um it's like you're 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 seeing this, they, these kids, in the point of view as a like they're adults. Well, for their time, they're they're fully adults, but for our time, it's like you're not. So it's it's very strange. But um, 
you know, Brenda's still ha after Scarlett. Um, ultimately, uh, Scarlett marries her second marriage is to another man by the name of Frank, um, not Rent. Um, so after that marriage of, with Frank, um, she starts a lumber business, which is which does well. Um, so Scarlett becomes this woman where she's taking care of her family's plantation. Um, she is on her second marriage or in her second marriage. Um, she's managing things. She's a, a business owner. Um, she's very adaptable. Whatever life throws at her, the war, the the government of reconstruction that, you know, was trying to tax her family out of business. So she's just, she keeps soldiering on every, sing, every single day uh, to keep surviving, you know, you know, marriage after marriage. Later, she does marry Rent. So her third marriage is to Rent, um, Rhett. And, um, yeah, she, she kind of like thinks that, you know, Rent at the end is like her true love because she realizes, she realizes, um, she realized that she did not have a thing for Ashley after all that, you know, Melanie dies and she realized she did have a soft spot for Melanie and she realizes that she doesn't truly love Ashley and that maybe Rent is truly her true love, which which kind of sucks. I do have to say that because it's like, oh, you had to marry Charles and, and Frank and realize that you didn't want Ashley and, you know, all these other guys. You chose them over me several times. but um, And in the end, you know, it's kind of like their relationship is like broken in pieces and it's so upside down. And that's when she finally says, oh, maybe I was truly actually supposed to be with Rent. Rhett. Uh, it's, it's really, it's really bad. It's like, uh, it's, it's really bad. Um, you know, Rhett was always, this is my small joke here. I guess Rent was always in the back of the car that were just, he was the um, I guess the last option in some ways, or maybe she just didn't see him until she saw him, which, which is, you know, which is just horrible, um, when you, when you love someone that much, and, uh, or, you know, for rent, he keeps on trying, um, but, um, Scarlet chose other people over him several times. Um, but in the end, you know, she does um, figure out that maybe it's with him that she should be. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Love is a is a battlefield. Uh, it's it's a love hurt. So, within this work with um, Gone with the Wind, you do see the ups and downs of that. You do see the ups and downs of Scarlet's financial life. Um, in terms of deeper meaning and analysis, it's, it, this has a lot to say about finances and love. These are two things that they're not stable, you know? Um, I mean, look at American life today and the reality with divorces and relationships and these things, you know, love is based on emotions. It's not truly based on, um, logical thinking a lot of people try to make love or relationships or marriages based on logical thinking and reason but love it's you can't control love it's just it's it's just what it is it's it's transcendent um you don't know sometimes you just meet that person that just makes sense or you just meet that person that takes your breath away. And, and for me, Gone with the Wind, the title kind of talks about how finances and love are, 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 you can't control them. I mean, mankind, we try to control the economy and society, and we try to control the world. We try to control even our the very grass that grows in our in front of our houses. You know, if the grass, you, you cut it the way you like it, you cut it when you want it, you want it to look a certain way, so you do. So we try to control every single thing in our lives and in our society. We try to shape it and form it the way that we want to. We try to control things and, and dominate things. But there are some things like love and finances. They're not up to us. And 
Scarlet, she is in the wind between uh, her government, between her lovers, between her marriages, between having kids, between managing her fine, you know, for her family's plantation and her lumber business. And, you know, it's things are, I mean, this is a bad pun, but it's like things are in the wind. You don't, you're being blown about here and there and you're trying to make sense of everything. You're trying to judge the contents of your heart to figure out where you should be. And Brent, he, he just kept on getting uh, the bad end of the stick. I mean, the uh, the other people, they just if you if you try to think about it logically, you know Ashley and Frank and and Charles, they all seemed like better choices than Rent, but Rent was just the the train that kept on chugging. He just never uh, gave up until Scarlet, you know, by the end he's like she's like, well, maybe I was wrong and. Yes, I mean, most people would blame her, but again, love is not, it's, it, it, there's no, I mean, there's millions and millions of people in America and around the world, or there's thousands and thousands of choices, uh, even, you know, Scarlett, since she was 16, she had a, a number of suitors, um, and, and, and most women, oftentimes, uh, even so to, to this day, they, they have a number of suitors to choose from. And so, I mean, trying to pick someone for life is not an easy choice. Um, and so some people pick a person and then they realize they were wrong. And then there's a divorce and then, you know, people just probably keep choosing until they die. Um, sometimes you meet the right person and you live, you're like, you're married for like 50 years. So things are very much in the wind, especially when it comes to love and it takes a lot to, to find your person. Um, so between finances, between people to choose from, uh, between choices you have to make in life. I mean, there's, there's lots more to the book. We, you know, we're, we're talking about Confederates and the Union Army and, and, um, the Reconstruction Era and slavery. We're, we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about plantations here. Um, so there's a lot to look at this work and, and there's a lot to judge. Um, but but again, for me, the title, the, the content matter within this work, it says a lot about Scarlet, what she had to go through, uh, what she had to figure out. And in, in some ways, it does show us a lot about ourselves because we all have to go through what she's going through. Um, from your early teen years, uh, all humans have to figure out finances and love and family and children. And these choices, are, they don't come easy. Um, and you want to make the right choice. And the right choice is, is, is not that easy to make. I mean, many people make choices that are on the world. Some choices are not always the best choices. So there's, there's definitely a lot to think about. So that's my summary analysis of this work. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.